Hello guys, welcome to Dr. Science. So today we are going to talk about an introduction to Lipid Transport and Storage, which is your chapter 25 in your biochemistry textbook. So first of all, I will start with the basics, then we will go advanced. So basically, we are going to transport lipids or absorb lipids from your small intestines. So suppose here is a guy who ate a lot of butter for his meal. So this butter is going, going to contain lot of lipids, right? Now these lipids are going to get absorbed from the small intestine um, and from the small intestine they are going to your liver and your adipose tissue. And in the liver and the adipose tissue they are going to get synthesized and once they are getting synthesized they will go to the extra hepatic tissues and in the extra hepatic tissues they will get stored or utilized now the major problem that the major problem here is that that lipids are insoluble in water lipids are insoluble in water so what is the meaning of this one so suppose if I take a container here and this container container is having a lot of water this container is having a lot of water so suppose what instead of calling them lipids I will call them as oils okay so oils or lipids or cholesterol the basic property of them are they are lipid are insoluble in water it means if you pour oil in water they cannot go to the bottom of the flask right because they are insoluble they will always stay on the top this is a basic uh, experiment we have done when we are in our childhood days right the oil will st always stay on the top of the reverse or the flask okay so what we have to do so obviously suppose this is the gastrointestinal system or the small intestine from where the lipids are going to get absorbed they have to go to your target system to your suppose this is the target tissue so the lipids from the gastrointestinal system or the small intestine they have to travel through the target system through your plasma which is present in the middle now plasma is like a water so obviously lipids cannot go from the uh, small intestine to your target tissues hence lipids hence there was a solution to this problem so what we are going to do suppose this is a lipid we are going to cover this lipid with the protein covering okay we are going to cover the lipid with a protein covering and hence so the, in the middle the core is our your lipids and the outer covering is your protein hence the entire complex is called as your lipoprotein now when this complex is formed they can freely travel through your plasma and they can reach your target tissues now the protein covering or the lipoproteins there are of different types okay now suppose if we take the lipids the lipids are your passengers whereas the protein shell we are talking about there are different types they are your cars lipids are your passengers and proteins are your cars there are different types of passengers and different types of cars so i will talk with the basics then so first of all we will talk about the four types of lipids so before starting that i will like to discuss that suppose this is a protein covering which is present outside and inside there are two types of lipids mainly two groups of lipids if we talk about the lipids inside are your 
non-polar lipids and not only that there are your amphipathic lipids so sir what is this amphipath amphipathic lipids and non-polar lipids so basically the lipids or the passengers that the protein shell is carrying the lipids or the passengers are basically of four types four major types there are four types of major lipids or the passengers that the protein shell will be carrying and we will divide them into two types of groups which are your non-polar lipids and finally we are we will talk about amphipathic lipids Sir, what is this amphipathic lipids and what are these non-polar lipids? So basically, the lipids are going to have a head. This is a head. Let me draw it with a different color. So suppose this is the head and this is your tail. So this head is called as your hydrophilic hydrophilic means water loving hydrophilic end or your polar end it means they love water whereas the tail portion it is your hydrophobic phobia means they, they are afraid and this is your non polar end they are water hating okay since they love both water and they also hate water, they are called as your amphipathic. Similar to amphibians. I hope you have heard about amphibians. Who are amphibians? Amphibian, amphibians are creatures which will live both on land and water. Like your frog. Right? These lipids also, they love water. They also hate water. Hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Hence, they are called as your amphipathic lipids. Under this category, the amphipathic lipids, we will mainly talk about. We will mainly talk about cholesterol, and the second one are your. So, suppose this is your lipid and to this lipid phosphates are attached these are your phospholipids so phospholipid and cholesterol are your amphipathic lipids next we will talk about non-polar lipids in non-polar lipids we will talk about suppose this is a glycerol molecule this is glycerol to this glycerol three fatty acids are attached three fatty acids are attached hence the name triacyl glycerols and the second one are your cholesterol with esters which are your cholesterol esters okay cholesterol esters so under non-polar lipids we will talk about tri triacyl glycerols and cholesterol esters so th those are the four types of major lipids which are present in your uh, let me draw it here so this is the lipoprotein pr this is the protein shell of a lipoprotein and inside we are carrying lipoprotein lipids right the major types are types of lipids were your non polar lipids and your amphipathic lipids so basically the core is consisting of lipids whereas the peripheral it is a protein shell and the entire complex is your lipoprotein now i talked about lipids lipids are the passengers which can be of different types like triacylglycerols uh, cholesterols phospholipids and cholesterol esters now we will talk about this protein component basically the lipoproteins are of four types there are four types of major 
lipoproteins. So, the first one will be your chylomicrons. Chylomicrons are your lipoproteins which are produced in your gas small intestine. So basically when you eat a lot of butter in the small intestine, the lipids are transported through your chylomicrons. So I will draw a basic diagram. Suppose this is your chylomicron or the protein shell and inside they are carrying lipids. Now the major lipid that is carried by your chylomicrons, I already told you, are your triacylglycerols. Okay. Now what is triacylglycerol? Yes, this is a non-polar lipid. Now second one are your very low density lipoproteins which are produced by your liver. Now what is this very, lido, very low density lipoprotein is carrying? Suppose this is a protein covering of the very low density lipoprotein and inside there are lipids. Now what is the major lipid that is carrying? I already told you lipids are your passengers and the protein shell is your car. Okay. The passenger that is carrying, the passenger that is present inside this car is called as your triacylide triacylglycerols which is also a non amphipathic non polar lipid right so basically the chylomicrons are your cars chylomicrons and very li low density lipoproteins are your different types of cars and the, these car these people are carrying the passengers which are your triacylglycerols and we will talk about high density lipoproteins which are your which is your good cholesterol and not only that we will talk about low density lipoproteins which is your bad cholesterol okay so we basically these are your chylomicrons very low density lipoproteins high density lipoproteins and low density lipoproteins there are different types of cars right and they inside inside there will be passengers which are your lipids which is the core molecule and basically chylomicrons the major lipid they are tra transporting are your triacylglycerols and vldl also carry triacylglycerols as the passenger whereas in case of high density lipoproteins they majorly transport suppose this is a protein shell they are majorly going to transport cholesterol and phospholipids and your low density lipoprotein low density lipoproteins which is your bad cholesterol will majorly transport only cholesterol they will transport only cholesterol which is very bad Okay, so before ending the topic, I will talk about the density. Sir, what is meant by this density? What are you talking? What is this uh, low density, high density? What is density? Density is nothing but thickness. Okay. Now basically, suppose uh, we are going to take a lipid here. This lipid thickness. Suppose this is the lipid thickness, which is, which is okay. Uh, we will take a like one centimeter or something. And here is your water, water thickness, or water density. Which is around five centimeters. So basically, lipid always the water is denser than your lipids right it means water is thicker th compared to your lipids and no, not only that i would like to say that density of lipids is inversely proportional to density of lipids or the thickness of lipids is inversely proportional to the lipid content 
okay so what is meant by this sir sir you are talking about density and lipid content i will give an example here suppose there is a very low density very low density lipoprotein i already told you density is proportion inversely proportional to lipid content it means this is low density or low thickness if the density goes down what will happen to the lipid content the lipid content should be increased that is a basic formula that we talked about so what is the lipid content that is the very low density lipo proteins are transporting to your triacylglycerols it means they can carry a lot of triacylglycerol suppose this is a very low density lipoprotein density is going down so obviously inside the lipid content should increase by the formula right so increase in triacylglycerol it means they can transport a lot of triacylglycerols similarly if we talk about high density lipoproteins suppose this is a high density lipoprotein i will draw the diagram small because the this high density lipoprotein this is a high density lipoprotein i already ta talked that density is inversely proportional to lipid content so then the, the density of high density lipoprotein or, or the thickness of the high density lipoprotein is very high so if you, there is increase in the density what will happen to the lipid content it will decrease right if there is a decrease in the lipid content what is the major lipid that the high density lipoprotein is carrying it is carrying mainly phospholipids or cholesterol so the phospholipids or cholesterol that they are carrying it will be only maybe 10% or maybe 20% like that whereas in the case of a very light in very low density lipoprotein the triacyl glycerol that they are carrying they can carry up to 80% or something like that 80 to 90% so that was about the density of the proteins so that was the video and in my next video i will talk about the metabolism of these lipoproteins thank you